What's the first image that comes to mind when you hear the word loot? Is it something like this? Well, you're partly correct. In fact, the lute is actually a family of string instruments that was very popular in the medieval era as well as the renaissance era. What you're looking at right now is a soprano lute. Well, maybe you're wondering, the title doesn't have the word lute in it, why are you talking about lute? Hang on in a second, I'll get to that point. So here's a theorbo. They say that the theorbo is actually a development of the bass lute. Theorbos are also often mistaken with the arch lute or the archiluto. It comes after the lute family itself. It is said that the theorbo was invented in Italy in the 16th century, so that's the Renaissance. And it continued to be a popular instrument in the Renaissance and Baroque eras. Before it was called the theorbo or theorba in Italian, it was actually called the chitarro, which sounds quite similar to the modern guitar. In fact, the word theorbo is actually the English form of the name because it was very popular in England too. Theorbos actually have no set size or number of strings, but what they have in common is that they are very large because they have very long bass strings, also called the diapasons. The number of courses range from 12 to 16. A course is a row of string or strings that have the same note. If you look at a typical lute carefully, you'll see that each course has two strings. These differences are regional as well. For example, the German, French, Italian, and English theorbos are all different. The difference between a theorbo and a bass lute is that the theorbo has more strings, so it can accommodate a wider range of notes. As a result, you can play it with an orchestra, or as they say, consorts at that time, or you can play solo. Along with the harpsichord and the viola da gamba, it can also be a basso continuo instrument. Let's talk about its shape. As you can see, it's very very long and I'll get to that in a minute. And a peculiar thing about the theorbo is that it has two sets of pegs. And that's because the strings are actually divided into two sets. They're called stopped and unstopped. So the stopped strings are the higher strings where you can play with your left fingers and their frets, just like a modern guitar. And then the unstopped strings are the very very low notes. Those strings are very very long, tuned diatonically like a harp. But what about the top or stop strings? Well, as you can see here, it's got a peculiar tuning. It's called the re-entrant tuning. And the reason why it is because if you raise the upper two strings an octave up, it will actually break. There are actually multiple kinds of tunings because not all theorbos have the same number of strings. There are two commonly used tunings called the G tuning and the A tuning. You can look them up here. You hold it kind of like a normal classical guitar, but instead of your leg propping it up, there's actually a strap behind it. The body is similar to a typical lute. It's got very ornate engravings on the sound holes. It's either three or one. The body is egg-shaped and the back side has stripes on it, like a sunflower seed. The strings were historically made of gut just like other string instruments at the time. Although today, and they're still making theorbos today, believe it or not, we use nylon or steel strings. So why is it so long? Well, physics. As you can see here, a way to decrease the frequency of the string is to increase the length. They really need to get that very bassy sound. Anyone who's got their hands on one can play it, whether it be men, women, rich people, or ones not so well off. Just like a modern guitar, it's also very flexible in its purposes. You can play it solo or with a singer or a group of instruments or you can even play it in an opera. Because it was so popular, there are lots of literature for the theorbo. There's solo music by Piccinini, Melli, Castaldi, Pittoni, and Riviani. Even big names like Handel and Vivaldi have obbligato parts for a theorbo in operas and oratorios. I've got a solo recording of the theorbo. You can hear how deep the bass strings are. It's hard to find a group recording with the theorbo nowadays, but I've managed to find one by the University of Sydney. 